The latest images on Hawaii's Kilauea volcano, the Pu'o crater, and the bizarre images of Scorching Lake, which is deeper than 10-story building. And we'll go into the monitoring of Kilauea to see what's going on there. These are recent pictures, and this is a USGS comparison, December 18 to September 23rd. You can see that it's grown about four times as big. Please consider supporting my Patreon account since YouTube has again demonetized my channel. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below. And we'll see what happens when this takes place. This is, of course, not good. Terrifying images, the emerging of the boiling water lake that's uh, deeper than the 10-story building. The picture published by Hawaiian Volcano National Park across its media platforms. Caption accompanying the media, media, the image reads, Just how deep is the growing water lake in Halimaumau, Halu, Halimaumau Crater, well, the Puo Crater. The 10-story building could disappear into its depths. And within the massive crater, it may look small, but the perspective is everything. The lake is about 150 feet deep and 885 long. The lake, located inside the Halimaumau or Halimaumau crater, whichever way you want to pronounce it, is found on top of Kilauea. Kilauea volcano, currently one of the world's most active volcanoes. As we know, in 2018, Halimaumau crater sank almost 1,600 feet after the eruption, and according to NASA Earth Observatory, in May 2018, as part of the broader eruption that poured lava from fissures to the east, the lake drained and part of the caldera floor collapsed because of that. A year later, in July 2019, the lake appeared in the lowest part of that crater. Helicopter pilots were the first to notice this phenomenon as they flew over the summit of Kilauea, and NASA Earth Observatory added water levels have risen steadily ever since then. Today the lake, now with a rusty brown sheen on the surface due to the chemical reactions taking place in the water, has an area larger than five football fields combined and a maximum depth of about 100 feet. Don Swanson, the volcanologist at the U.S. Geological Survey Hawaiian Volcano Observatory, explained the water kept accumulating, forming a pond. He said, we have a drill hole a little more than one kilometer south of the crater where we measure the level of the water table. We know that the crater floor dropped a little more than 70 meters below the water table back in 2018. And any time that you punch a hole below the level of the water table, water, of course, is eventually going to come up and fill that hole. Explosive volcanic eruptions are determined by water and other gases. If magma is mixed with dissolving gases and steam, an eruption may happen. Otherwise, lava flows smoothly flow from the cracks on the ground, which is what happened at Kilauea for the past 200 years. And he says 60% of the time, though, Kilauea has an eruption explosively for the past 2,500 years. Swanson explains that we have been misled by how calm Kilauea has been. If this was 1720 rather than 2020, then we would uh, not have seen a lava flow for more than 200 years. We may have thought Kilauea was always an explosive volcano. Explaining in which two cases an explosive eruption could happen, Swanson said, in one case, magma could rise quickly up the conduit and intersect with the lake. In the second, the crater floor could collapse and drop all of the water down to a zone where it would be quickly heated into steam. This is by Melanie Cadian on Express UK. Now let's take a look at the Kilauea volcano updates. Okay, here we are at Kilauea USGS Multimedia. As you can see, we have all the, uh, what we can choose from over here, multimedia, image galleries. And this is the comparison of the lakes, December 18 to September 23rd. You can see how big it has become in nine months. Kilauea's growing summit water lake. Okay. 
and uh, older, sorry, older pictures here. And uh, should we go to the uh, image galleries? Let's see what we see there. What else do we have? Okay, the collection of image galleries. These are older ones from the eruption of 2012. Okay, uh, you can play around there. You can uh, see whatever interests you. But let's go to the uh, monitoring. No, volcano update for Kilauea. And let's see. This is October Thursday, October 1st. The latest uh, update. Kilauea volcano is not erupting. Monitoring data for the month of September shows variable but typical rates of seismicity and ground deformation, low rates of sulfur dioxide emission, and only minor geological changes since the end of the eruption in activity of September 2018. There were approximately 1,450 earthquakes during the month of September at Kilauea, an increase of about 35% from the number of earthquakes recorded in August. So that's about a third more than the previous month. That's uh, obviously a sign uh, that there may be a coming uh, activity. Over the past month, summit tilt meters recorded four deflation inflation events, a significant decrease from last month's total. The long-term trend of deformation at Kilauea summit and Middle East Rift Zone continue to show inflation. So inflated because there's magma coming up, consistent with magma supply to the volcano's shallow storage system. GPS stations on Kilauea's south flank continue to show elevated rates of seaward motion. It's going towards the south, in other words. Hawaiian Volcano Observatory HVO continues to carefully monitor all data streams along Kilauea's east rift zone and south flank for important changes. Sulfur dioxide emissions rate are low at summit, consistent with no significant shallowing of magma. Some amount of sulfur dioxide being dissolved into shallow groundwater at the crater lake at the bottom of Halimaumau. Work continues to try and quantify this process. As of September 29, the lake depth was about 150 feet, and the crater lake was uh, last sampled by UAS January, and uh, that's, that's quite a lot of uh, months before. I mean, that's uh, 10 months before. And additional sampling is planned. Sulfur dioxide emission rates are below detection limits at Puo'o and the Lower East Rift Zone. Uh, not currently erupting areas of persistently elevated ground te temperatures and minor release of gases. Hazards. Hazards remain the Lower East Rift Zone, eruption area at the Kilauea summit. Residents and visitors near the 2018 fissures and lava flows and summit collapse area should heed Hawaii County Civil Defense National Park warnings. The Hawaii Volcano Observatory continues to monitor the changes in seismicity and deformations. And uh, since June 25, 2019, Kilauea has been at normal green for definitions. You can see the volcano alerts. So let's go to the monitoring now because we can see some very nice tilt meters there as well if you want to see which, how you can see them. This is the monitoring map for Kilauea. And um, let's wait for it to come on because there's a lot of information. As we see, this is Mauna Loa, the biggest volcano on the earth and let's pull out a little bit uh, okay this is the area of um, Pahala this is where most earthquakes here are deep they're deep and they're basically in the trunk of the mantle plume that's under there now we know that from what they told us uh, Loihi is a seamount Mauna Loa, Kilauea and Loihi are like three fingers sticking up but they are uh, fed by the same magma chamber. That's why when you have activity in Kilauea, you don't usually have activity, that is, eruptions in Mauna Loa. And when you have eruption in Mauna Loa, you don't have eruptions in Kilauea or Loihi. And Loihi, of course, will be the new part of addition of the big island because that's, of course, growing and lava coming out of this area. It's, we know that Hawaii is in the area of a hot spot in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. There we go. Okay, you can see that, let's pull out. We pulled out too much. Okay, I'm gonna lower it. The Hawaii is in the middle of the Ring of Fire in the Pacific Ocean, it's a hot spot there. Okay, and going in, let's see if we can monitor some of our uh, 
our GPS stations to see how the tilting is going. What should we take? GPS. Should we take this one? Uh, the past, uh, shall we take the past 10 years? Where is it? Forget it. Let's take another one. Past two years, let's go to this one. It's not there either. Okay, <laughs> what did I tell you? Where are they? Oh, here we are. Okay, let's go to the, oh, this is the past 10 years. Okay. How nice, we found one. Okay, this is, um, this is after the eruption of 2018, you can see. It shows that um, uh, this is going, um, if it goes up, it goes east. So this is going east. If it goes down, it goes north. If it goes up, it goes north. It's going northeast. But you can see here that the, uh, this is after the eruption, that it has uh, deflated. And it's, you can see that the, well, it's now inflating again. Okay, that's the activity there. Let's go to another one. Let's go to, let's go to um, anything in Puo, uh, Pohala. Let's go to this one, see if we get something there. H-O-V-E. There we go. This one is, of course, going north, east, and it's deflating. It's deflating. Um, now let's go this one. What's this one? Here. Shall we go to Mauna Loa here? Let's see what we have here. Past 24-hour earthquakes. GPS. Nothing? Okay, some of them are not readily available, I guess. Let's go to this one, Puka. Okay, I should have seen these before. Okay, ooh, look at this. Look at the movement here. Oh, this is inflating, deflating, but look at this. This is going north, east. It's going northeast. So you can see this is falling east. The P station PIIK. Amazing movement there in the past 10 years and in the displacement in the past two years since uh, Kilauea erupted. Look at the movement here. So we do have a lot of movement in this area, as you can see. And uh, this is on USGS, and I'll leave a link below for you for this. Thank you for your support.